let my prayer come into your presence, O Lord. If you were here at Mass yesterday, you would realize that this was the same response that uh, that was taken. The question is why are we repeating the psalm? It is an indication of a man, a woman, who prays and prays and prays and it seems his prayers, her prayers are not being answered. So she keeps repeating the same words, he keeps repeating the same prayer. Let my prayer come into your presence, O oh Lord. She is doubting, he is doubting. Is God really hearing me? So let my prayer come into your presence, O oh Lord. I guess we have all gone through this prayer before. When times in our lives we feel that our prayers are not going to God's presence. And we keep saying the same prayers to him morning, afternoon, evening. Job was in a similar situation. He knew he had done nothing wrong and yet he was suffering. So all he could say was that, Lord, let my prayer come into your presence. Whenever life seems to be hard on you, harsh on you. Don't worry, keep praying, and your prayer will surely get into his presence. Amen. Amen. In the gospel, Jesus, Jesus gives us three issues of discipleship. Very simple. We call them the sayings. One is that foxes have holes and bears of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. So all Jesus was saying is that, let me say it because it's still true. All he's saying is that, you see, Christianity is not something that is sentimental. Unfortunately, these days, people are worshiping God out of sentiment. You know, we are worshiping God because we are feeling, we are happy, we, are, we want to have some, I don't know, experience. And we are reducing faith to externals. I can sing, I can laugh. No, 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 it's, it's more than that. If your Christianity is about how you want to feel outwardly, inwardly, then you are not a hundred percent Christian. He tells him, look, the son of man has nowhere to lay his head. Sometimes following Jesus could mean that you not have any place for yourself. It can happen to you at the workplace. You could be sacked from your workplace. It can happen to you. Your marriage could be breaking down. It happens. Then the second one he mentions is that leave the dead to bury their dead. It's true. Sometimes following Jesus could mean that you don't have time for some things in your life some pleasures, some family issues, some personal issues, just let them go. You don't have time for them. The last one he says is that no one who puts his hand to the flower and looks back is fit for the kingdom. Those of us who are into business or investment, you know when you make any investment, maybe after a year or six months or three months, whatever investment is, you are allowed to renew it. And until you renew it, the investment will come to an end. Jesus is saying that if we are following him, there is not a month of renewal. Following Jesus is not a one year renewal. If you say, Jesus, I'm following you, God, I'm for you, don't have to renew. It's, not, it's a forever commitment, one lifetime investment. There's no need to go back and move your hand from the plow. May God help us to make our commitments as Christians, as Catholics, a lifetime commitment which will end someday in his presence. Amen.